Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overhaul Sandbox. This time we are in Kerbal Space Program 1.3.1 and I have the Enterprise, the Starship Enterprise NCC-1701, not A, B, C or D or whatever, uh, just the original. And you might be wondering, well, where is it? I mean, here we are in the VAB, uh, can't really see anything here. Um, yeah, but you see the staging there. There's staging. So where is it? Oh, well, there's there's a bit of it. Right, well, we're gonna need to zoom out quite a lot because I made it full scale. Actually, it's supposed to be 288 meters and we are at uh, 285.7. So I cheated on a few meters. I could just extend these out a little bit more and it'd make it up, but I just stopped where I was. So yeah. It's huge, it's unwieldy, it requires auto strutting quite a lot. And because I use procedural parts, it occasionally has some floaty business here, which is annoying. Every time I load it up, basically, these procedural parts like to separate from each other. Uh, but it's not even procedural part on procedural part right now. There are reaction wheels there. The reaction wheels barely do anything, by the way. This is all realism overhaul. And so the reaction wheels are weak, very weak. But we have KSP Interstellar, so we have antimatter engines and warp drives. The warp nacelles, well, I'll take it apart in a sec. Let's just go uh, top to bottom, describing what the parts are. So. The root part is the Telemachus bore cockpit from uh, Lackluster Labs. And then we have some extra Lackluster Labs parts here uh, that I added and tweak scaled. I had to adjust the tweak scaling on those. Then we have procedural tank, procedural tank, uh, another procedural tank to cover that, and then another procedural tank, procedural tank, procedural tank, procedural tank. Uh, so that's all procedural parts. And then the windows are from Lackluster Labs. So that's those with uh, some tweak scale, but I don't think I'm using the tweak scale. Then we have little RCS ports here. These are from KSP Interstellar. They're omnidirectional vernier RCS thruster systems. Uh, technically non-RO, but with KSP Interstellar, it hardly makes a difference. <laughs> um, uh, the impulse engines are here, and they are the ones that are gonna get us off the ground. Yes, I'm gonna try and launch it off the ground. This is, this is not canon or anything, this is about Kerbal's recreating the Starship Enterprise, okay? This is not how it was actually launched or anything. So what we have here is an antimatter container, diamagnetic antimatter container with anti-hydrogen, a positron antimatter reactor, and then the Crusader thermal rocket nozzle. And you can see the maximum ISP with hydrazine, which is our current fuel, is 2,884 seconds. And um, we are using hydrazine to get as much thrust as possible. I think it's the maximum thrust option. I'm not sure. People can correct me on that. But as you can see, these get uh, 21,000 kilonewtons uh, at their maximum. And there are eight of them here. Uh, the staggering is a little bit off, but it's fine. They're clipping and everything. It's a whole business. So, yeah. So that's what's going on there. I have some all moving procedural wings that is because we have to go through the atmosphere I'll show you the center of mass uh, center of thrust and center of lift so it's like that but still it's really rough it's rough anyway uh, so that's the saucer section and then we have this uh, part here we've got a bunch of structural panels I think from B9 aerospace and then also, uh, and then Universal Panels also from B9 Aerospace, but also other little bits uh, that are from, um, it's a ship pack called 77 Industries. And I actually had to edit it because it tried to make water weigh uh, one ton per liter. I got a gap there, I, I messed up somehow. I need to shift the body up. Anyway, we'll pretend that that's not there. So, yeah more of the lights and then we've got radiators on on front here because we need a lot of radiators so we've got graphite radiator skin wrapper times three from uh, ksp interstellar of course and then those are lining that bit 
And then we've got uh, Communitron 88-88 tweak scaled up for our main dish, deflector dish. And that will have to start retracted. I think I've got Venn stock revamp in here. So that's changing the look of the Communitron 8888. Um, procedural tank. And then there's a reaction wheel here. Tweak scaled as large as possible. It doesn't give much torque anyway. Um, as large as possible uh, to connect that tank to that tank. I thought that would stop it from doing the floaty business where the tanks float above each other, but it doesn't seem that way. Um, we're using the hexaborane as ballast. It's not the best ballast, but I was thinking, well, we don't have dilithium. I wanted the most exotic fuel that I could find, and hexaborane was it. I mean, there, there's lithium, but that's not that exotic, really. But um, yeah, so we've got some ballast uh, to help with the center of mass situation because uh, we've got uh, RCS build aid here. You can see center mass starting, ending, and all that. I mean, it's a little bit off and that creates some problem, but the ballast helps. And we can later, we'll, we'll have to later on replace the ballast with, uh, with probably more reactor capacity. I found that out. I've already done the launch. I recorded the launch already. Uh, so I'm doing this description after doing the launch. So I know that our reactor is not quite good enough for the warp drives and we are going to have to scale it up. So probably what we're going to do is reduce the hex boring and scale up the reactor as much as we can. Probably we'll have to put more mass in the saucer section to counterbalance even. But yeah, we have hydrazine here. But, you know, you go like, well, can you carry hydrazine in this section with people in and all? But it's really only utilizing 3% of the space. So, and we have space remaining even. Mo uh, half of that 3% is still remaining here. So, so it's basically like we have tanks at the bottom here. Uh, this is a uh, procedural fairing here covering the reactor core, which is in this case an antimatter initiated microfusion reactor and a thermal power generator. I don't know if that is the best combination for this. But that's what we've got. Uh, we have the same sort of setup for the antimatter thrusters, impulse engine thrusters here. And then lots of radiators, radiator, radiator, radiator. Uh, these uh, struts are from 77 Industries. And um, this is just an aviation fuel tank from some plane part thing. Uh, lackluster Labs, Lackluster Labs. And this is a Lackluster Labs bay for our shuttle and if I could get the camera anywhere near there as you can see a dragon with its trunk would fit pretty neatly in there uh, two of them even so no problems and certainly the regular shuttles would fit in yep okay so dragon for scale now on the pylons well in the cells We've got a uh, procedural tank, then uh, uh, FASA fuel tank, and that's again so that the, the front of it, this, this procedural part doesn't float off. And inside, we've got these procedural fairings to cover the warp engines. You can see these warp engines here. These are, of course, from AKSB Interstellar. And we've got more warp engines here. This tank here is another FASA fuel tank covered in radiators. And then fast fuel tank, fast fuel tank. Uh, these are all moving uh, wings because we wanted yaw control in the atmosphere, just a little. Fast fuel tank, and then the ramp intake scaled up to 800%. And that is carrying another procedural tank. Uh, empty, of course. So, all of this put together basically is um, 12, 13,000 tons. Uh, that's less than the mass of the actual Enterprise, but the actual Enterprise has all the decks in the middle and it's carrying other stuff inside. Basically, we've got the exterior skin plus the power stuff, like the impulse engines, warp engines, and uh, what you got, um, reactor, that stuff, and fuel for impulse engines. And again, uh, we have fuel here, but you can see it's the hydrazine again, but it's only using 2% 2, 2 of that space. So we could have way more hydrazine if we wanted to, but then we'd have trouble getting off the ground. Right right now we've got a decent thrust to weight ratio. Not that you'd notice on launch because it's going to be slow. This is huge. This is huge. 
and all the calculations for the radiators because you know there are complex calculations that KSP Interstellar does with these and all the warp drives and the and the antimatter engines that's gonna cause some extra lag more than usual and Faramir space is going to have like a bad time with the aerodynamics let's face it so anyway that is the setup we have room for extra warp engines if you wanted we could I sneak some more even on this section of the warp nacelle because we've got what uh, two three meters to spare and or we could squish them in so if we needed more warp drives we could get it and if we need more um reactor space reactor look how small the reactor is this is a procedural fairing if i get uh there we go see lots and lots of space for a larger reactor incidentally uh we've got these uh, hydrazine tanks that are connecting to that because it turns out that the antimatter engines need to be directly connected to their tank for uh, to detect which fuel they're using. So that's why we have those. And um, they're actually mounted directly to this tank which and then tweaked out. But yeah, so we could make this reactor much bigger if we wanted to. And we might have to. But of course that has other problems, right? Then if you make the reactor bigger, your thermal situation gets worse and worse and we need to find place for radiators. Right now we aren't cheating on the radiators. The radiators that you see are the radiators that we have. We are not hiding any radiators. We're not doubling up any radiators. So yeah, if we scale that up, the main problem isn't the mass, it's the where are we gonna put the radiators problem. So anyway, uh, with that, I think you've got a sense of this whole thing and I am going to show you the launch. Okay, so here we go. You can see the sheer size of the Enterprise, basically double the height of the VAB, straddling the launch pad with its warp nacelles there. Yeah, that is, uh, it's a thing, it's a thing. We've got far. We've got a whole bunch of things that could make our lives miserable. We have ignition and the flight profile for this would, even disregarding the aerodynamics, have to be quite different from a normal rocket. Remember, it doesn't have any staging, and it doesn't really diminish its fuel that much. It starts out with a thrust weight ratio of 1.7-ish, and then it ends up with a thrust weight ratio of 3, so it doesn't increase its acceleration the way a rocket does. So the flight profile has to be steeper, but we're gonna make it even steeper than that because we want to avoid any aerodynamic horribleness basically. So our delta V to get to orbit is substantially more than it would normally be for Earth orbit. It wiggles around a lot. There's a lot of inertia uh, to it and so if it starts going in one direction it tries to keep going in that direction for quite a ways and it's tough to manage that. Smart ASS finds it impossible to do it. Even once we get into space it's really hard for it unless we start at a full stop and then maybe it can turn but Otherwise, uh, if it's already got some momentum, Smart ASS tends to do pilot-induced oscillation kind of things, and so its uh, PID would need to be adjusted to be able to control this. But yeah, you can see it's yawing to one side. Now, that's why I decided to put those aerodynamic surfaces to help guide it a little bit. We can lock those later for looks, but uh, for now, they are hopefully helping out a little bit. Along the flights, of course, the radiators are gonna start glowing quite a lot, and eventually they gotta turn red and yellow. Some of them turn yellow, some of them turn red. You can see it's just really hard to keep it along the intended trajectory here. I'm manually controlling it because, well, there's no other option really. Pretty steep, you can see. Uh, we only passed the speed of sound above 20 kilometers, and here we are passing 900 meters per second at like 60 70 kilometers so yeah but the time to apoapsis is not that high you'll you can see it there so we're not going to really end up in a wacky orbit well not a very wacky orbit it'll be a pretty standard orbit though i'll keep burning out so that we can get higher because if you get too close to the earth you can't really start the warp engines the it limits the amount of throttle you can have and the lower the throttle the more reactor power it takes. Basically, the further away you are from the speed of light, regardless of whether it's higher or lower, the more reactor power it takes to start up the warp drive. It's optimal at the speed of light. So, so yeah, in order to actually 
have the reactor power the warp drive, we really need to be higher up. It turns out that we can't get high enough, but I only find that out after, uh, after launch and doing this whole test. So we will discover that. Spoilers. Sorry about that. You can see the radiator is glowing right now. Note that we have an obscene amount of food, water, and oxygen. Uh, the water is assuming some recycling, so it's actually about a tenth of its requirements. But uh, I think uh, it's enough for uh, the full crew for like a year. I might have to redo the map on that, but I think that's about what we've got. Uh, we could pack it in for five years. That's not going to be a problem. Um, we could just, you know, add extra engines or increase the size of the uh, impulse engines a little bit more. And we could manage that. Again, our thrust weight ratio at sea level is 1.7. So, of course, it didn't really show that when we were uh, getting off the ground because there's sort of a... 3 to 1 uh, gap between the game and real time. That's better than with the Monuments launcher by quite a lot, but it sustains that 3 to 1 ratio all the way up. So we're in orbit, and I try to start charging. You can see I'm clicking decrease warp speed there in order to match the maximum allowable throttle. And But our reactor can only manage about 100 gigawatts. The, what I didn't account for in this case is that the thermal power generator has a ratio to it as well. So I was thinking about 100 gig gigawatts because of the reactor, but it turns out that the thermal power generator can't output that 100 gigawatts. It's lost there, so we couldn't manage it. Anyway, here I am uh, trying to get to a higher orbit with the remaining impulse engine fuel, hydrazine. Not optimal, not the most efficient fuel, but necessary to get off the ground, I think. And here I start charging again, and not enough electric power. So, yeah, we're going to have to size up our generator. And again, there's a whole matter of the radiators needing to be bigger because of that. So that's a rub. And you can see the generator output is just not 100 gigawatts. So anyway, that is the status of this. You can see it's slow, laborious turn. That's with not only all the reaction wheels involved, but also the RCS. That's its turn rate. So, yeah. I have built the Enterprise before, but it wasn't full scale last time when I did it. There's an old video of me doing it, and that wasn't full scale, I don't think. Uh, and I don't think it was quite as good as this one is. But this obviously needs a lot of work. I do have other uh, solar systems in here, other star systems, I mean. And that's thanks to RSS exoplanets. Uh, one reason that we're in uh, KSV 1.3.1, I believe. Uh, there are a lot of mods that I have in here that are dependent on KSV 1.3.1 and didn't really advance. That's why we're in this version. But anyway, uh, with this, I will continue working on it, though I probably won't include the full description of the parts and also the launch in future videos. So if I continue working on this, uh, we'll have this baseline for you. And I'll just describe the changes. Anyway, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.